Hi class, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, by the way, how's your week last week? Can you hear me very clear, class? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Yes, Thank sir. you. And, uh, I think uh, this week was your preliminary examinations week. Meron na po ba kayong subject na nag-exam kayo? Meron na po, sir. Yes, po. Uh, all right, so... So, uh, ayoko naman kasi sumabay sa iba niyong subject. So, I want to free your time so you can focus more on your other subjects. Maybe we can uh, take your exams, preliminary exams, this coming week. No? So, kailan kayo walang klase? Ay, kailan po yung wala kayong klase? Ano yung days na wala kayong normal? Monday. 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 Sunday lang po, sir. Sunday, okay. So, okay, so... Hmm. Alright. So, Sunday... Okay. I'll give the the prelim exam this coming Thursday. Then, uh, you can... Uh, answer it until sunday then i will provide a link para i-send nyo or i-upload nyo yung uh, sagot ninyo so normally yung exam naman natin will be essay and situational case so wala naman wag na tayo mag-focus sa identification and then enumeration kasi more on theories naman kasi tayo so walang computation so okay lang yun all right, so maybe we can start now our discussion. So the coverage of the exam will be from chapter 1 to chapter 5. So I think the discuss natin today will be for chapter 5. So it will take probably one hour for us to discuss about the conceptual, I uh, no, no, not conceptual framework, about the causal framework or control framework so okay about the control framework so let us define first what is an internal control so internal control comprises the plan of organizations and the coordinate methods and measures adopted within a business to safeguard its assets check the accuracy and reliability of its accounting data, promote operational efficiency, and encourage adherence to prescribed managerial policies. So from the definition of the internal control, sinabi dyan, plan of organization. So why do we need to plan uh, internal control? So syempre, we need to create internal control policies. And why do we need to plan? Uh, for the establishment and creation of internal control policies. Do you have any idea why do we need to plan for the internal control? Any idea, class? Can you still hear me? You can you can answer using the chat box or you can use the microphone uh, if you want to I say it out loud. Sir, try po. Alright, sige po. I think, sir, kaya need po nila mag-plan for internal control. Kasi po, ang goal po ng, ng isang auditor is for, ang, 
ang isang auditor po, ang internal auditing po is future oriented. So kailangan po na yung yung improvement na ma yung improvement na ma-i-imply nila sa isang company is for the long-term changes po. Kaya kailangan i-plan to be efficient po. All right. So we need to plan Ayan. to be efficient, to be organized, di ba? Kasi uh, internal control is a set of procedures, di ba? Na kailangan sundin ng mga tao within an organization. So, syempre, uh, paano nila susundin ang isang procedure kung walang plan? So, we need to set uh, those procedures. We need to carefully plan ano ba yung right procedure for a particular process para ma-implement yung internal controls within those processes. That's why we need to flip, we need to really plan for the internal control. So that's correct, yung efficient. And then for the long run or the long term, yes, it could be. Kasi syempre, well, we're going to use the internal control not only in the current period but also but also in the future dahil syempre kung effective talaga yung internal control policies so we are uh, going to use it uh, still in the future so if there are any improvements that we need to to improve for those policies uh, we can set improvements however uh, but still uh, these are the internal control policy is still uh, implemented even before. Parang gano. So, any other um, answers or any other ideas about why do we need to plan uh, for internal control? Sir, pwede ko mag-answer. All right. All right. Sige po. Uh, sure. Siguro, sir, for you. We need to plan for us to be on the track, on the right track, tapos para hindi po tayo maligaw. And then, kailangan natin mag-plan para wala tayong miss All out. Right. Para pulido po, tsaka planado po talaga yung gagawin natin para magi maayos po yung pag-execute natin na control, internal control po. Yeah, that's correct. So, tama yung sinabi ni Ariel. Now, we need to plan uh, to properly execute those internal controls and uh, it will serve as a guide para hindi tayo malito. There will be no confusions. Because, uh, syempre, if we are really working with a big organization with a lot of people, we cannot control those people by just uh, shouting, uh, instructing them what to do. Diba? Kailangan may set rules, set procedures, kung ano yung dapat gawin at dapat ibigay sa kanila yan ahead of time before the implementation. That's why if we are going to plan uh, or we are going to implement set of internal control policies and procedures, we need to carefully plan those uh, sets of uh, IC policies, and then we need to disseminate it to those uh, people within the organization for them to know. And before the implementation, kailangan aware na sila, di ba? So that is correct. Ariel is also correct. And I would like to check the chat box from uh, Shania para po ma-minimize yung occurrence of errors. Oh, I'm so sorry. Let, let me just Oh, it's recording already. Okay, so ito, okay, I'll go back to the chat box. Shana, from Shania, para po ma-minimize yung occurrence of errors, kumbaga po, preventive measure or control. Tama. Because uh, internal control is to prevent the risk. And one of the risks we normally encounter are those mistakes and errors. Siyempre, if we plan uh any policies, not only internal control, any policies. Siyempre, kapag may careful planning tayong ginawa, na-polish natin, pulido, 
yung set of rules, policies na i-implement natin within an organization, mamiminimize yung errors na or loopholes, di ba? Na, ay, may kulang pa pala. Oh, so, at least, uh, doon pa lang, sa pagpaplano pa lang, nawala na yung errors, di ba? And then from Mario Ramboyong, to reduce risk po. Yes, which is also correct. That's why if we, if we plan, uh, kahit naman sa bahay, di ba? We are, kung magta-travel tayo, oh, I'm, syempre, mga estudyante kayo, I know you, you would like to, to travel pag summer, kung sa sakay pupunta, di ba? Pinagpaplanuhan nyo rin yun. So, to reduce risk, di ba? Siyempre kapag nagta-travel tayo, pag nagta-travel tayo with our friends, minsan may isa sa, sa friends natin, nagdadala siya ng uh, first aid kit. Di ba? So, yung first aid kit, siyempre, if there are any future risk, o oh, at least, may dala kung may nasugatan, may panggamot, merong first aid, uh, yung initial first aid na pwede apply kapag uh, nasugatan or may minor accident dun sa, ano, sa journey, sa travel journey. So, syempre, yung plano, maganda na yun para ma-reduce ma yung risk. So, kung meron mga uncontrollable risks, yun talaga yung hindi natin mapipigilan. Pero yung mga avoidable risk or risk na na incur pero kaya namang maremedyohan at least mayroon tayong pang remedyo because we plan ahead of time. And then from Ray Mabel, para po ma-ensure na ma-meet yung responsibilities sa company. Which is also correct because uh, we plan for those set of uh, internal control policies because uh, Within our organization, there are uh, different levels of authorities. And each level of authorities has different responsibilities. And hindi naman pare-pareho ng internal control uh, process bawat department, di ba? Lahat sila may internal control policies and procedures na implement natin, pero paiba-iba dahil iba-iba sila ng function. At dahil iba-iba sila ng function, iba-iba din yung authority, delegation ng authority, iba-iba rin yung responsibility. So, iba-iba yung application ng internal control policies and procedures. From Jelena, in order to have sound procedures and avoid misdirections. So, tama. Sound procedures because uh, it, uh, it's uh, lenient. Lenient procedures, smooth sailing, avoid misdirections. Uh, like for example, so there will be no further confusions uh, so in case na ma-implement yung IC controls, uh, internal control policies and procedures from like a me to ensure that the operation is in accordance with laws and standards. Yes, because there are in accordance with laws, so it's a compliance audit. With standards, it probably uh, like is uh, referring to the reporting or financial audit, diba? Miguel Antonio uh, said planning allows us to set a goal with which enable us to have a clear vision on what will be our end result. Yes, because if we are planning or if we plan for the preparation of the IC policies and procedures because uh, probably we have a goal being set first. That's why we have a uh, concrete plan. Uh, ano ba yung gagawin natin uh, regarding sa internal control policies and procedures? Siyempre, chinek nila yung risk. Uh, Inassess nila yung risk. Uh, is the risk really big? Is it really pervasive? Matindi ba? Or is it really negligible? Yung hindi naman, wala namang effect, di ba? Or hindi naman siya pervasive, pero may effect pa din. So from that um, assessment ng risk, doon natin tayo magpa-formulate ng internal control policies and procedures. Siyempre, kailangan natin i-assess yung risk muna before we uh, implement certain internal control policies and procedures. And that is one uh, way of planning or setting the plan for, yeah, setting the internal controls. 
All right. And let me check again. From Jane, please to promote efficient operation and to protect asset. Yes. Angeline, for the smooth flow of internal control. Correct. Oh, sorry. Again, let's check. Literally to reduce the risk of asset loss. Yes, that's uh, really correct. That's 100% correct. As, um, if we are um, having a good plan for internal control policies and procedures and we implement those internal controls uh, properly and accurately, uh, it will prevent uh, the organization from losing additional um, I, losing profits. Uh, it's supposed to be a profit, pero kung walang internal control, naging loss. And then, uh, syempre, uh, securing of assets, securing of resources on which uh, internal control is, uh, is really very important uh, in the process flow. And then Andrew Miguel said, Sabi po ni Theodore Roosevelt, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Which is correct. Tamang tama. Kaya mahalaga ang planning para mas segregate yung significant matters or yung point of concern para ayun po. Yung i-apply in whole audit activity instead of focusing on irrelevant matters. Which is really correct because if we plan, we focus on the important items or items that uh, we need uh, to apply more concerns. Pero kung wala tayong plano, baka mag-focus lang tayo doon sa, ano, sa matters na wala namang significant impact or wala namang value-adding activities sa organization. So that's why we really need to plan. And let me... Yeah. Coordinate methods. And the coordinate methods and measures adopted within a business. Why do we need... Uh, this coordinate methods and measures adopted within a business. Kasi, di ba, we have different uh, departments. So, we have different departments in an organization or an entity. Then, syempre, iba-iba yung process flow nila. And then, this internal control policies and procedures, although iba-iba um, yung application per department, pero generally, uh, considered ang internal control as a whole. At dapat fit siya sa lahat ng department. That's why uh, there must be a coordinate methods and measures adopted within a business to safeguard its assets. So, if you can remember uh, yung diniscuss natin last time, like for example, in kay Nestle, Philippines, di ba? na nalaman nung internal audit team nila na merong excessive purchases nung sugar. Ang, kasi bumili ng sobra-sobrang asukal yung purchasing manager. Bakit kaya daw? Sumabra yung, ano, yung pagbili ng asukal. Kasi nalaman naman ng internal audit team na inuwi pala nung purchasing manager yung ibang sako ng asukal Tapos, binibenta niya, may sarili kasi siyang business nung bigasan, asukalan, mantikaan. Tapos, binibenta niya doon. Siyempre, uh, he's uh, profiteering at the expense of others. So, nagpa, uh, kumikita siya, wala siyang gastos. Pero expense ni Nestle Philippines. So, that's one way to, uh, I mean, it's a preventive internal control I mean, it's a detective internal control para um, malaman kung ano yung mga loopholes or mga gray areas sa uh, process flow ng uh, isang organization or isang department. And then, check the accuracy and reliability of accounting data. Diba? Check the accuracy and reliability of accounting data um, from this definition, part of the definition of internal control, lumalabas yung uh, isang objectivity nung uh, setting the internal control framework, which is the financial reporting objective. And then, promote op operational efficiency. Uh, so, from this term, uh, 
part of the terminology ng internal control, lumalabas naman yung ikalawang objective ng internal control framework, which is operational objectivity. And then, and encourage adherence to prescribe managerial policies. Na lumalabas naman dito yung third objective ng internal control framework, which is uh, compliance objectives. So let me uh, go to the next slide. The internal control. Internal control is broadly defined as a process effect, affected by the entity's board of directors. So why is it affected by the entity's board of directors? Because uh, the internal audit team, the one who's implementing the internal controls across the organization, uh, nagra-report sila directly sa board of directors. Naalala pa po ba yun? Kanina nagra-report ang internal audit team sa board of directors. And particularly, what committee ng board of directors sila nagra-report? Audit if you can remember, audit committee. committee po. Audit committee. So the audit committee is the particular committee that oh, we just, okay. The audit committee is the particular committee under the board of directors where the internal audit team is directly reporting. So the internal control is a process. So sino yung nag-effect? Si board of directors. Siya yung primary nag-effect kasi gusto ni board of directors safe lahat ng assets, safe lahat ng resources, profitable ang business. And then si management. Because management uh, is the team that is being entrusted by the board of directors or the investors to manage the uh, the whole organization. So, si management. But, uh, syempre, generally speaking, si management yung binigyan ng trust and confidence para i-manage yung business. But there are certain cases kung saan si management naman yung nagka-create ng fraud. That's why uh, the internal control is applicable to all from the very basic unit of the organization up to the entity as a whole, kailangan implement yung internal control policies and procedures. And other personnel designed to provide reasonable assurance. Bakit siya reasonable assurance? Because um, we cannot give, tayo bilang isang auditor, we cannot give absolute assurance. Kasi pag sinabing absolute assurance, you're saying na, you, you audit and what you found is correct and accurate 100%, di ba? But, pero, tayo bilang isang auditor, bilang isang accountant din, we cannot give 100% uh, uh, reliance, 100% accuracy sa financial information, di ba? Pag, pag accountant tayo, we don't say 100%, di ba? The financial statement is 100% accurate or 100% correct. We're not saying that. Ang sinasabi natin, the financial statements are fairly presented in all material respects. Yun yung sinasabi natin. Kasi, we're not really so sure baka merong error na nandun sa financial statement na hindi natin nakita. That's why we are just saying fairly presented. Ang pagkaka-present ng financial statement is fair, tama, pero hindi 100% correct. And same goes with auditors. We do not give absolute assurance. We only give reasonable assurance. Uh, meaning to say, uh, sa, sa pag-conduct namin ng audit, sa pag-audit namin, wala kaming nakita na errors or fraud. Pero kung may, kung may fraud man or error, hindi namin siya nakita. Oh, di ba? Or kung may error fraud man, very minimal na lang. So they provide reasonable assurance regarding the achievement of objectives. So ano na yung mga objectives? Operating objectives, financial reporting objectives, compliance objectives. The cost of framework. So cost of framework, ito yung sinusunod mostly ng lahat ng internal auditors all over the world. Kasi yung COSO, um, the meaning of COSO is Committee of Sponsoring Organizations of the Treadway Commission. So yung sponsoring organizations na yon iba-ibang 
institute yon or iba-ibang organization yon na nagsama-sama para i-formulate ang isang effective internal control o, o kaya ano, effective presentation. Ano ba yung magandang internal control? Diba? So, during 1985, uh, year 1985, uh, maraming institutions or organizations na nagsama-sama para mag create ng COSA framework. So, una na dyan, si Institute of Internal Auditor. So, nabanggit na natin to before uh, nung pinag-aaralan natin yung chapter 1. Kasama na dun yung standards on auditing, uh, on internal audit. So, nabanggit na dun si Institute of Internal Auditors. And if you can remember uh, some of the videos that we have uh, came from Institute of Internal Auditors. So, isa sila sa organization na kasama sa pag-formulate ng COSO Internal Control Framework. Pangalawa is the Institute of uh, Asia, uh, American Institute of Certified Public Accountants. Kasi uh, yung mga CPAs, mga accountants, naka-adhere sila sa proper internal control. Uh, tayo, mga accountant tayo. Siyempre, we record transactions and we make sure that those transactions are correct walang mali, uh, I mean, are correct uh, in accordance with the, I'm so sorry, uh, those financial statements are fairly presented, not correct, and it is in accordance with the applicable financial reporting framework. And all the transactions are recorded in accordance with the uh, process procedures of a certain organization. And then the third uh, organization is the American Accounting Institute, uh, our American Accounting Association. Then we have Institute of Management Accountants, uh, Financial Executive Institute, and then the New York Stock Exchange. So these uh, six organizations uh, formulate the COSO internal control framework kasi yung uh, lahat sila nasa, sa America naka-based. So that's why the COSO internal control framework is originate, uh, originally came from uh, U.S. Then by the year 1992, the first internal control integrated framework was formulated. Ito yung parang pa cube yung presentation, uh, Rubik's Cube. So nakalaro na ba kayo ng ano, Rubik's Cube? Nakakita na kayo ng Rubik's Cube? Yes, sir. <laughs> Yes, ba? So, dati kasi usong-uso yan eh, yung Rubik's Cube na yan. So, uh, yung itsura ng Ru Rubik's Cube, uh, ganun yung uh, pagkakapresent ng uh, koso sa internal control. So, mamaya pag-aaralan natin siya. And then, uh, by year, during the year 2013, uh, the internal control integrated uh, framework was uh, redesigned and then uh, re-evaluated. So, managkaroon ng bagong changes, may dinagdag, uh, na, may nadagdag sa control as a components ng internal control, may nadagdag sa levels of internal control, so, ganun. And then, in year 2017, yung internal control was not only more focus with the internal control pero may inintegrate pa sila yung enterprise resource management kasi uh, nowadays uh, hindi lang tayo naka-focus sa safeguarding ng assets naka-focus din tayo kung paano ma-improve paano pa maparami yung resources ng isang organization kaya meron na silang inintegrate na enterprise resource management pero focus lang muna tayo sa internal control so, hindi na muna natin pag-uusapan yung enterprise resource management. Maybe in the future, kung makaabot tayo ng fourth year, fifth year, pwede natin i-discuss. So, the following slide. Uh, can you see my slide? So, uh, can you still see the slides, class? The slide. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Yes, okay. So, presenting to you the cubic presentation of the internal control framework on which the topmost uh, side of the cube uh, represents the objectives of the internal control. So as 
discussed before, uh, there are three objectives uh, under the internal control. So we have the operating objectives, reporting objectives, and then compliance objectives. Siyempre, operating objectives um, focused on the operations, efficiency, and effectivity of uh, operations. Uh, Siyempre, kung efficient and effective yung operations, uh, mas mataas yung profit kasi productive yung mga tao, mas less yung cost dahil siyempre, dahil effective, efficient, mabilis, lesser energy, so onti lang yung cost na na-incur, mataas pa yung profit. And then sa reporting objective naman, uh, reporting objective uh, focuses naman on the uh, accuracy of the financial statements, it must be in accordance with uh, the applicable financial reporting framework, yung tinatawag yung FRF, di ba? Pero yung financial reporting framework na to, iba-ibang klase to. So, can you um, tell me kung ano yung mga financial reporting framework na alam natin? Uh, if you still can remember, kasi alam ko mga third year na kayo. So, syempre, patapos na kayo sa intermediate accounting ninyo, yung financial accounting. Uh, I'm sure ex expert na kayo pagdating sa sa mga reporting frameworks natin. So, uh, do you have any idea what are those reporting frameworks or financial reporting frameworks? Uh, you can answer using the chat box or you can answer uh, by uh, opening your microphone and saying out loud. Do you have any idea? Juan Carlos said, GAAP, sir. Yes, that's correct. GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles. But uh, let me just uh, correct it uh, according to our setting, to the Philippine setting, because what we are using here uh, is, yes, it's a GAA, but particularly that's a Philippine Financial Reporting Standards, as said by Andrew Miguel and Laika Me. That's correct. So GAA, PFRS, that's correct. Uh, so the first financial reporting framework that we have is the full PFRS. Diba? Yung full PFRS, applicable to sa mga large companies or listed companies. Diba? Alam nyo naman yung mga listed companies dito sa Philippines. Diba? ABS-CBN, uh, GMA7, lahat ng mga binibenta yung shares of stocks uh, sa Philippine Stock Exchange, about PLDT, Smart, Globe. So those large or listed companies, they use full Philippine financial reporting standards. So dapat compliance sila doon. So that's the first financial reporting framework. How about sa mga small and medium-sized entities? Ano naman yung reporting framework na ginagamit nila? Do you have any idea? Do you have any idea, class? So, pinag-aaralan natin siya ngayon kasi I want you to know it uh, earlier as of now. Para syempre kapag nag-aaral na kayo, pag... Uh, pinag-aralan nyo na yan sa intermediate accounting, at least, na our na-discuss na sa in intermediate accounting, at least meron na kayong idea. Uh, yes, sir, we know, the, uh, we know those reporting frameworks, di ba? IFRS uh, is PFRS. So, kung mapapansin nyo, yung IFRS, PFRS, parehas lang sila. 
PAS, PAS. Well, uh, PAS, uh, nanggaling siya sa IAS, di ba? IAS is International Accounting Standard. So, may kikwento ko sa inyo. Dati, wala pang IAS or PAS. Kasi PAS Philippines. Uh, Philippine Accounting Standards. So, dati, US GAAP pa lang. So, yung US GAAP, uh, syempre, nag-originate siya from US. Ang naggumawa nun, uh, Financial Accounting Standards Board, FASB. So, ginawa nila yung US GAAP kasi syempre, kailangan merong set of accounting standards na susundin, susundan yung mga accountants. And then, these standards over time, uh, ginagamit to all over the world, yung US GAAP. Suddenly, uh, merong mga cases kung saan nagkaroon ng um, uh, misleading financial presentation sa financial statements uh, na gumagamit ng US GAAP. That's why uh, yung ibang uh, firms, ibang companies, ayaw na nilang gumamit ng US GAAP. So, nagkaroon ng international accounting standards. So, yung international accounting standards, ang standard setting body nun, IASB, International Accounting Standards Board. While yung US GAAP, PASB, fin Financial Accounting Standards Board. So, yung IASB, IASB, Lahat ng inisya nilang standards, yun yung IAS, di ba? We have IAS 1, um, IAS 2, inventories, di ba? So we have that. Uh, those are the accounting standards, uh, international accounting standards set by IASB. So uh, as the time goes by, a lot of uh, companies all over the world are using IAS standards even the philippines that's why we adopted it locally kaya meron tayong pas de ba pas and then uh nagkaroon ng uh, joint venture si us si fasb and then yung international accounting which is esb nag-usap sila na Maybe we can formulate a particular accounting standards in the future kung saan pareho na natin gagamitin yung accounting standards na iyon. So both US GAAP saka uh, IAS uh, magsasama. So yun na yung IFRS. Kaya kung mapapansin niyo bakit may IFRS? Bakit may IAS? So before ang IAS, siya yung counterpart ni US GAAP. Pero ngayon, wala na masyadong nilalabas na IAS. Lahat ng nilalabas ngayon, puro, puro IFRS. Kasi yun na yung convergence between the two accounting standards, which is US GAAP and then IAS. And then in natin yung locally, which is PFRS. So that's the history behind uh, bakit may PFRS, bakit may PAS, because of those. So yung... So let's go back again. Yung unang financial reporting framework is the full PFRS. Yan yung tama. Sinabi nyo, PFRS or PAS. Full PFRS ang tawag doon. Pero ginagamit lang yan ng large and listed companies. How about for small and medium-sized entities? Meron tayong, ano rin, meron din tayong accounting standards or reporting framework na ginagamit ng mga small and medium-sized entities. So, sabihin ko na, so, yung uh, mga small and medium-sized entities, they are using PFRS for SMEs. So, they are using PFRS for SMEs. Yung PFRS for SME, uh, similar lang rin siya with full PFRS. However, merong mga PFRS standards under PFRS for SMEs na mas madali compared sa full PFRS. Kasi mas lax yun dahil syempre maliliit na company lang, small and medium-sized entities. Unlike large or listed na kailangan stricto tayo. And then last uh, reporting framework 
ay yung applicable sa micro entities or small entities. So we have PFRS for small entities. So these are the three accounting frameworks that we are using or financial reporting frameworks that we are using here in the Philippines. So una, full PFRS. Ikalawa, PFRS for SMEs. Ikatlo, PFRS for small entities or micro entities. So, uh, do you get, do you understand um, my point regarding uh, the financial reporting frameworks that we are using here in the Philippines? Uh, can you still hear me, class? Yes, Paul. All right, sige. Yes. So, yes. thank you. Uh, just uh, tell me, baka kasi mawala ako dahil kumukulog-kulog dito. But uh, let, let's continue. Let's continue again. So, then tayo sa financial reporting objective, dapat in accordance with the applicable financial reporting framework, di ba? Dahil accountant tayo, alam natin kung ano yung reporting framework applicable for that company. Kung large or listed company siya, then yung reporting framework na dapat gamitin nila, full PFRS. Kung small or medium-sized entity sila, dapat ang reporting framework na ginagamit nila, PFRS for small and medium-sized entities. And then kung micro-entity sila, and then dapat ang gamitin nilang reporting framework will be PFRS for small entities. So, Siyempre, at least, may idea na tayo para makakomply tayo with the financial reporting objective ng internal control uh, framework natin. And then last one is the uh, compliance objective. So pag sinabi natin compliance objective, uh, these are um, adherence. In adherence to the existing laws, rules, and regulations that we have here in the Philippines as well as the policies that we have in our organization. So aside from the objective, we also have the components, diba? So we have five components here. So pahapyaw lang muna. So didiscuss rin natin mami. We have the control environment, risk assessment, control activities, information and communication, and then monitoring activities. And on uh, the side, the right side, we have the levels of organization, levels in the organization, starting from the basic, which is the function, up to the entity as a whole. So this are, uh, this represents, all of this represent uh, the internal control framework uh, formulated by Committee of Sponsoring Organization or COSO. So, mapag-aaralan ulit natin to siguro in the future kung ako yung intern uh, yung uh, auditing theory teacher niyo and then kung ako rin yung applied auditing professor niyo sa fifth year niyo so mapag-aaralan ulit natin ito pero pahapyaw na lang kasi nag-discuss na tayo, de ba? So, let's go now with the next slide. Objectives. So, for the objectives, uh, we have three objectives. So, naalala naman natin to, di ba? Operating objectives. So, it focuses on the performance or profitability goals of the firm. Siyempre, dahil uh, sa operating objective, uh, we would like to check if the company is really um, having a profit earning, di ba? Uh, kung performing ba talaga yung operations, effective ba or efficient yung nasa operations. So, yun yung nasa operating objectives. While financial reporting objectives, accurate financial statements or financial information. Na-discuss na natin kung ano yung applicable financial reporting framework. Depende kung gano'ng kalaki or gano'ng kaliit yung entity. So, tandaan nyo lang yan, baunin nyo lang yon yung financial reporting framework kasi magagamit nyo rin yan in the future. So, sino ba yung professor nyo ngayon sa ano, intermediate accounting, uh, part 3? Sir Jeremy po. Uh, so, si Sir Jeremy. So, syempre madidiscuss nyo rin yon So, uh, anong chapter na po ba kayo doon sa intermediate accounting nyo? One po. 
chapter 1. All right, so I'll leave it to Sir Jeremy dahil magaling naman si Sir Jeremy. And then last one is compliance objective. So adherence to relevant regulations. So pag sinabing relevant regulations, ito yung mga regulations being implemented by uh, government agencies. Uh, ano na ba yung mga government agencies na kilala natin? Siyempre, dapat aware tayo dun sa mga government agencies na, uh, na pagka, uh, I mean, magiging uh, pag nagtrabaho na kayo. ba? So sh you should be aware. So what are those um, government agencies na SEC? Yes, that's correct. As said by Paul Mar Martin, SEC, Earl John, BAR, Miguel Antonio, BAR, like a May. Alfaya Hazel, so BIR. So, Miguel Antonio, BSP. So, tama yun. SEC, why do we need to follow the rules and regulations of SEC? Kasi, kapag hindi tayo nakakomply, hindi tayo nag-submit ng annual audited financial statements, may penalty tayo kapag hindi tayo nakakomply. And SEC is the one uh, government agency regulating the corporations in the Philippines, di ba? So, kung hindi ka compliant with the rules and regulations ni SEC, baka ma-dissolve yung corporation na pinapasukan natin, di ba? So, dapat compliant tayo. Kung gusto nila ng uh, annual audited financial statements, dapat natin ibigay. Kung hinihingi nila yung uh, general form financial statement, so, Ito, sinasabi ko lang sa inyo, in the future, mamimit nyo yun, makikita nyo yung, ma-encounter nyo yung mga sinasabi ko. So, we have general form financial statements, uh, GFFS ang tawag nila doon. So, aside from annual audited financial statements or AFS, nagbibigay rin tayo ng GFFS. And then, kapag special corporations kayo, yung mga unusual corporation like mga banks, uh, magbibigay naman kayo ng special form financial statements or SFFS. And then, meron pa tayong binibigay dun sa kanila, general information sheet. So, yung general information sheet, doon nakapaloob kung meron bang nagbago sa board of directors, meron bang napalitan na officers ng company, or meron bang additional paid in capital na uh, sa shares, di ba? Or May dividends bang declare So, nandoon yan sa general information sheet. So, those reports, kapag hindi nyo sinabmit sa SEC, may penalty kayo. Pinakamababang penalty is 10,000 pesos. And then sa BIR naman, di ba? As you said, uh, BIR. Uh, Siyempre sa BIR, dapat compliant tayo kasi normally mga tax yung kinakomply natin sa kanila. And then, this... Taxes, although siyempre na nagbayad tayo pero kinulang yung binayad natin, babayaran pa rin natin yung deficiency taxes na hindi natin nabayaran. So, from those deficiency taxes, magbabayad pa tayo ng penalties, surcharges, and interest. Kasi kinulang tayo ng bayad sa BIR. So, yun yung consequence kapag hindi tayo naging fully compliant with the BIR. Diba? SSS rent. Sa SSS, dapat compliant tayo. Kailangan yung SSS contribution ng mga empleyado na hukulog. Kapag hindi natin hinulog, may karapatan si SSS na ipasara tayo. Pag penaltihin tayo sa mga contributions na dapat, na dapat uh, binibigay natin, kinocontribute natin doon sa SSS. And then, may nabasa pa akong isa, Court of Tax Appeals. So, yung uh, Court of Tax Appeals, well, etong Court of Tax Appeals na to, kapag si BIR pumasok, kinasuhan ka ni BIR, kakasuhan ka niya sa Court of Tax Appeals. And then, ikaw, aapila ka rin doon sa Court of Tax Appeals. And then, uh, ito pa, sino pa? BSP. Normally, si BSP, uh, sa mga ano to eh, uh, nare-regulate niya mga banks. So, kapag sa banko kayo, compliant din dapat kayo with the BSP. COA naman, ito naman sa mga government. Like RTU. Si RTU, uh, dapat compliant din dapat uh, si RTU with the COA. 
DBM, uh, well, DBM is uh, sa mga government din, Department of Budget and Management. So, not all companies uh, are uh, need to comply with the rules and regulations of DBM and COA kasi yung iba, private entities. So, yun. So, let me just check again. Can you still hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, all right. So, okay. Let, uh, can you just wait, class, for a moment? I will just close the windows para mahina yung ulan. All right, class. So for the next slide, we have the components of internal control framework. Can you still hear me, class? Yes, sir. All right. So thank you. So for the components of the internal control framework, we have the five components. So first one is the control environment. Second one is risk assessment. Third one is the control activities. Fourth, information and communication. Fifth is the monitoring activities. So, the so control environment, which is the very first component of the internal control, dito, uh, tinitignan natin kung ano ba yung setup ng working environment ng isang organization, di ba? So, um, bilang internal auditor, chine-check natin ano ba yung setup ng workplace. Uh, was it very conducive? Okay ba uh, for work? Uh, maganda ba? Mayroon bang proper controls sa na in place? Ganon. So, uh, kaya natin tinitignan yung control environment to check kung magiging effective ba yung sinet natin internal control procedures and policies. So, uh, let's say for example, uh, yung control environment na Chine-check natin, uh, open space lang siya. Isang buong room, halo-halo na lahat ng operations. Halo-halo lahat ng department. Yung accounting department, katabi niya yung sales uh, department. Tapos walang room na nagde-divide sa kanila. Eh yung sales department, maingay. Siyempre maraming calls, maraming tinatawagan. While yung accounting department, tahimik. Diba? Gusto nakafocus lang sa trabaho. So, uh, what do you think? Kung magkatabi yung ano, sales department sa finance department or accounting department, maingay si, uh, si sales department, di ba? Tapos naririnde si accounting department. Sabihin ni accounting department, ano ba yan ang ingay-ingay nyo? Hindi kami makafocus sa trabaho namin. And then magrereklamo naman si sales department. Sabihin ni sales department, Paano kami makakapagtrabaho kung pipigilan nyo kami magsalita? And that's the nature of our work. Diba? We need to gather more customers. Kung wala kaming customer na makukuha, wala kayong tatrabahuhin dyan sa accounting. So, uh, kayo bilang internal auditors, ano yung naiisip nyo gawin kapag ganun yung setup na nakikita nyo? Any suggestion? Ano yung mga ano? Gusto nyo gawin? Ilipat ng room yung accounting department. Tama. So, ilipat ng room either si accounting department or si sales department. Diba? Or kung gusto nyo, gagawa ng room ang bawat department. So, yun yung isa ninyong control measures. Uh, ayan na. So, okay na yun. Para na kayong uh, internal auditor mag -isip. Kasi gusto nyo uh, in place lahat. Uh, efficiently, effectively working lahat at merong control. Siyempre, kung walang room ang accounting department, yung cash na nandun sa kanila, naka-open lang yan. Nandyan lang sa an area nila. Kung sino-sino pwedeng makakita kung sino-sino pwedeng makakuha. That's why we need a special room or particular room for accounting and finance department. 
And then yung sales naman, no, ilagay natin malapit naman sa marketing since uh, magka pareho naman silang maingay o at least okay lang sa kanila, di ba? So that is one way of checking the control environment. Nakukuha po ba? Any question regarding control environment? Any question? I think none so far because uh, you're all still in silence. So let me just check the policies or principles under control environment. First principle is the commitment to integrity and ethical values. So sa bawat organization, meron silang ethical values or code of ethics na sinusunod. Katulad rin sa atin, di ba? Sa RTU, may sinusunod sa RTU. May code of ethics ang RTU. Siyempre, uh, one example, uh, dress code, di ba? We have dress code sa RTU. Kung assuming walang pandemic, pumapasok tayo lahat, okay lang ba pumasok yung mga girls na uh, nakaskirt pero 5 inch above the knee, o kaya 8 inch above the knee. Okay lang ba yun? Papapasukin ba kayo ng guard? Hindi. Hindi, ba? O yung mga boys naman, nakasando. Gusto na mga boys ipakita may muscle daw sila, ba? Tapos, gusto nila nakasando sila pumasok. Papapasukin ba sila ng guard? What do you think? Kung papapasukin ba sila? Hindi po. Hindi po. Hindi po. So, kahit gustuhin man natin na ganun yung damit natin, uh, we still need to comply with the existing uh, code of ethics na meron or dress code na meron sa isang organization like the RTU. So, hindi tayo papapasukin uh, sa particular area kung hindi natin sila susundin. So, so that is one way uh, of uh, giving controls by looking at the control environment. So yung ting balikan natin si RTU. The control environment ni RTU puro mga bata ay nandoon. Syempre mga bata pa tayo, di ba? O tila yung mga matatanda doon bilang lang natin, pwede naman natin banggitin, di ba? <laughs> <laughs> Pero hindi na natin babanggitin kasi baka um, ma makaabot sa kanila. Pero, syempre, mostly doon, puro mga bata. And then, syempre, ang mga bata, gusto, uh, gusto nila, uh, they want to express uh, themselves. Syempre, uh, by fashion, by their emotions. And then, eh, syempre, kung lahat-lahat express nila yung sarili nila in a particular area, magkakaroon ng chaos. ba So, Kaya nag-set na control ang RTU that this is the only dress code that you can uh, use. These are the following dress that you can only uh, wear in RTU. Ganon, ba? Yung iba pa nga, ba? Yung, like for example, uh, di ba uso yung, ano, yung mga shorts na may ikli? Uh, so, pag nasa bahay tayo, gusto ng iba, nakamaikling shorts. Yung ibang... Boys naman, gusto nung tees na, t-shirts na tiranggalan ng sleeves, ba? And then yung yung gilid nung t-shirt, ginugupit pa, aabot na dun hanggang baba. Yung parang onti na lang, mapupunit na. So, syempre, that's one way to express uh, ourselves uh, by being comfortable, by being uh, uh, who we are. Pero we cannot wear that on... Uh, particular places like RTU. So, yung dress code is a control. It's a control activity na nilagay ni RTU para lahat uh, sumunod. So, yun yung sinasabi natin. And then, number two, principle, board of directors exercises oversight responsibility. So, balik tayo kay RTU, they do have board of directors, pero hindi board of director ang tawag. Board of trustees yun sa kanila. Kasi hindi naman sila uh, profit corporation. Isa silang government-owned and controlled corporation. 
CRTU dahil state university sila. So, board of trustee ang tawag. So, they exercise oversight responsibility. Yung board of trustees, tinitignan nila kung ano yung itsura no? control environment. So, kung akala natin, yung board of trustee, nandun lang, nakapwesto lang sila sa taas, but the truth is, tinitignan nila mula sa estudyante, pati mga faculty, pati sa management, yung admin ng RTU, tinitignan nila lahat yun. Sino yung gumagawa ng tama, sino yung gumagawa ng mali. Ngayon, kapag merong uh, admin employee ng RTU na may ginawang mali, makikita ni board of director, makakarating sa kanila yun. Ano, ni board of trustee, makakarating sa kanila yon And then gagawa sila ng paraan, ano ba yung dapat ibigay na sanction ano yung dapat na preventive measure para doon. So, yun yung sa board of directors or board of trustees. And then, sa mga private companies naman, syempre, kapag may nakita silang loophole doon sa policies, existing policies, uh, sila rin, nagbibigay rin sila ng additional internal control. Kasi tinitignan nila yung um, buong control environment. Number three, establish structure, authority, and responsibility. So we establish structure, uh, organizational structure, para malaman natin kung sino-sino yung mga uh, nakapwesto sa organization na dapat bigyan natin ng authority uh, regarding internal control, policies and procedures. Sila yung mag-check, magka-counter-check, uh, counter-balance, di ba? So, and then, ano yung responsibility nila? So, ganun yun. That's why we need to check as well the the structure of the organization. So, kung mapapansin nyo, uh, let's say for example, di ba? Uh, balikan natin si RTU. Uh, si RTU, um, organizational structure niya is uh, we have students and each student... Uh, may mga teachers, di ba? These teachers or professors, they are reporting sa department heads. Like, uh, for example, si Sir Jeremy, uh, he is reporting directly to Sir Rowell because he is the department uh, head of accountancy. And Sir Rowell is reporting to Dean Opalencia, which is the Dean of College of uh business and entrepreneurial technology and then the dean is directly reporting to the vice president for academic uh, affairs and then the vp for academic affairs is directly reporting to the president so doon chine-check kung ano yung structure ng organization and ano yung mga authority nila di ba so my authority yung um Department head, uh, ano yung mga uh, dapat niyang gawin, ano yung responsibility niya na isiset uh, for all the professors uh, working under CBET or under accountancy department, ano yung mga uh, dapat uh, ibigay sa mga students, di ba? So, um, yeah, yeah, there are times na wala tayong klase, di ba? Like last week, we don't have class because it's university week. Uh, nag-join ba kayo ng University Week? Or not? Can, can you still hear me, class? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. So, can you still... So, you can still hear me. Pero nung last week, wala na, hindi naman kayo nag-join sa University Week, no? Kahit ano lang, virtual. Virtual uh, view. Hindi po. Hindi, because we don't have, we don't care. We really don't care. So, but it's okay. Diba? Uh, may kanya-kanya tayong life, diba? Na hindi naman tayo pwedeng um, i-instruct na manood na hindi naman natin gusto. But, uh, ayun. So, uh, in the organization, uh, we have to check, kung tayo si internal auditor, we have to check ano ba yung structure, ano yung authority na meron doon sa mga 
uh, line managers, uh, line heads, and ano yung mga responsibility. Kasi uh, kapag alam na natin yung structure, authority, and responsibility, alam natin kung ano yung internal control na procedures and policies na ibibigay natin sa bawat department, sa bawat team, di ba? And then number four, commitment to competence. Dapat lahat uh, competent, di ba? So, kayo ba gusto nyo ba mag, makapagtrabaho or uh, yung katrabaho nyo hindi competent, tamad lang, di ba? So, ayaw naman natin ng gano'n na tayo masipag tapos yung katabi natin, uh, tamad-tamad, di ba? Lazy. And then, um, pareho kayong sumisweldo. Ikaw, todo ka ng effort. Siya, hindi. Pareho kayong sumisweldo. Ikaw, pagod. Siya, relax lang. So, ayaw mo ng gano'n. Siyempre, kailangan lahat competent pagdating sa trabaho. Kasi kapag competent yung mga workers, yung mga employees, productive yung operations, efficient and effective, mataas yung profit, lesser yung cost. So, yun yung meron. And then, fifth is enforce accountability. So, syempre, kung alam na natin yung structure, authority, and responsibility, uh, alam na natin kung ano yung mga accountabilities ng mga uh, nasa organizational structure. For example, ikaw yung operations manager. Yung authority mo is limited within the operations. Yung mga pwede mong utusan yung mga nasa operations, di ba? And alam naman natin, di ba, katulad nung sinabi sa isang movie uh, Spider-Man by uh, Spider-Man. Sabi na sabi ni Spider-Man or not sure if it's Spider-Man or yung uncle niya. Sinabi na with great power comes with great responsibility. So same here, if you have greater authority, then you have greater responsibility. Kapag operations manager ka, uh, yung authority mo is uh, within the operations department, then responsibility mo rin lahat ng resources within the operations department. Lahat ng resources doon, lahat ng asset doon, accounted para sa'yo. Accountable ka for those assets. Kung nawala yung machine, kasalanan mo kasi ikaw yung operations manager. Dapat inaalagaan mo. Ganun po yan. So, any question regarding control environment? None so far. So, let's go with uh, the uh, what I call that risk assessment. So, sa risk assessment, uh, as far as I remember, na pag-aralan na natin to before, di ba? Uh, yung risk assessment. So, so, the risk assessment is a assessing the risk, di ba? Kasi yung audit ngayon is a risk-based audit approach, di ba? And, syempre, para magawa natin yung risk-based audit approach, kailangan i-assess natin yung risk. And uh, one focus ng COSO framework or COSO internal control framework uh, ay ang risk assessment. Kasi sinama, kaya nga niya yung sinama sa uh, components ng internal control. So una is the control environment. Ikalawa is the risk assessment. Why do we uh, assess risk bilang auditor? Bakit natin kailangan i-assess yung risk bilang auditor? Do you have any idea? If you have ideas, insights, you can share it through our chat box or you can uh, speak through your microphones. To, okay, so let me just check again. All right. Okay. From the chat box, 
para maiwasan yung risk, sir, at smooth yung plano gagawin. So, oh, yeah. To prevent future loss of the organization. So, as like I may have said, to prevent future loss of the organization. That's why we need to assess the risk. Kasi may mga risk na kayang i-prevent. And there are risks na nagbibigay uh, ng loss sa company. At kung preventable naman or controllable naman itong risk na to, kapag in natin yung risk, makikita natin ano ba yung mga risk na controllable, di ba? So, by iwasan natin yun, mapaprevent natin yung future loss sa organization. Juan Carlos said, para maiwasan yung risk, sir, at smooth yung planong gagawin. Siyempre, if we assess the risk, that's true. If we assess the risk and uh, we have seen those risks na nandoon nag exist sa company, um, maybe we can prevent it or we can remove the risk. Siyempre, kapag uh, we plan uh, to set internal controls, may iwasan natin yung mga risk na yun. So magiging okay yung company. And then from Mary Grace, para po mabawasan yung loss from that risk, which is yes, uh, same. Alfaya, para po mas efficient and effective po yung operation, which is also correct. Kasi um, sa operational audit, di ba, we are focusing more on the efficiency and effectivity, effectiveness ng operation. And then Lady Hope, to identify possible threats that may affect the operation along the process. So yes, that's correct. Andrew Miguel said, risks are inherent. So if we can flow with risk, then we can easily misalign with company's objectives for the safety of the workers in the operation process. From Charlene, to obtain an understanding of your company and its environment, including the company's internal control and prevent losses. So all in all, uh, uh, from the views uh, of most of us, uh, sinasabi to prevent further losses, that's correct. And uh, para mas maintindihan natin kung ano ba yung nature ng business. Because uh, by assessing the risk, uh, we can identify what's the nature of the business kasi may mga similar risk na nag exist uh, based sa nature ng business, di ba? Like yung banks, yung mga banko, uh, their nature is uh, banking industry. So, ano bang merong risk uh, sa banking industry, di ba? Dati uso yung mga bank robbery, may mga sindikato na uh, nirarob yung bank, pumupasok, may dalang baril. Uso yun noon, di ba? Na maliliit pa tayo. So, uh, Doon, tayo bilang internal auditor, malalaman natin kung ano ba yung mga risk, di ba? So, from dati kasi, wala pang mga safety lock, ay uh, yung automatic lock, back, uh, automatic lock yung uh, mga bank. Ngayon kasi may automatic lock na yung bank. Dati, kaya, kaya maraming bank robbery na nangyayari before. And now, onti na lang yung bank robbery. Siguro pag sobrang gipit na ng mga ano, ibang tao, uh, tinatry nila yun. Pero syempre, wag naman sana dahil uh, kailangan hindi tayo mag-gain at the expense of law, or at the loss of others. So, uh, um, syempre, as time goes by, yung mga banks, natuto na sila. What are the preventive measures para maiwasan yung... Uh, intruders or bank robberies in the future. So, yung mga banko, naglagay na ng mga grills, di ba? Meron silang salamin, may grills din at the same time. Yung pintuan, merong security lock na ang pwede lang magbukas is yung mga guard, yung mga taga loob ng bank. And then, kapag may nagbukas na hindi taga bank, tutunog yung security system nila mag alarm ma-alarma yung police, ay yung pinakamalapit na police station. So, ganun. And then yung meron silang malaking vault doon. So, yung vault doon, uh, kahit pasabugin pa yan ng malakas na bomba, hindi siya masisira. So, dati kasi pwedeng, ano eh, merong vault cutter na, ano eh, na kayang makasira ng vault. 
and then now, kahit uh, gano'ng kalakas yung bomba, hindi masisira yung vault, hindi mabubuta. So, those are the preventive measures, preventive controls na in place uh, for the banks. So, that's why we really, we really need to check the risk or we really need to assess those risks existing for a particular business at the same time na iintindihan na rin natin kung ano yung nature nung business. Ano pa? Mm -hmm. So the following are principles on the risk assessment. We need to set suitable objectives. So why do we need to set suitable objectives pagdating sa risk assessment? Because uh, we need to specify those objectives. Ano ba yung objective natin? Uh, why do we need to uh, set those internal control policies? Why do we need to assess the risk? Diba? So just like what, uh, what you said, to prevent losses, uh, para smooth sailing, smooth flowing yung operations, uh, para mag-guide lahat, para okay. So, yun yung nasa objective. And then, we have to identify and analyze the risk. Siyempre, na-identify, uh, we have, na-assess na natin yung risk, na-identify na natin. Also, we need to analyze those risks. Kailangan natin i-analyze yung risk, di ba? Uh, um, one reason why we need to analyze those risks para ma-check natin kung gano'n ba kalaki yung impact ng risk sa business, di ba? Siyempre, may mga risk kasi na uh, controllable, may mga risk na hindi controllable. Tinatawag natin yung mga risk na hindi controllable as inherent risk. These are risk na nag exist na sa business even before, at the time pa lang na in-establish yung business. So, ano yung mga example ng, uh, ano yung mga example ng inherent risk? Yung mga risk na hindi natin kayang pigilan, nag exist na talaga. Uh, do you have any idea? Ano yung mga risk na uh, Inherent, hindi na, hindi, nandun na talaga. Fortuitous event, yes. And one example of fortuitous event okay. is the acts of God, di ba? Pag... So alam na alam talaga. Yung environmental risk, yes. Typhoon, fortuitous event, calamities, yes. Those are inherent risk. So one inherent risk, one great inherent risk that we are uh, experiencing now is the pandemic, di ba? So itong pandemic na to is a risk, inherent risk na to talaga noon, di ba? Uh, aware lahat ng tao na, yes, magkakaroon ng pandemic, but we are not so sure kung kailan, di ba? At hindi natin alam kung anong klase ng pandemic yon. But there is a pandemic coming, di ba? Hindi lang natin to alam kasi wala naman tayong care, di ba? But those business uh, men, businessmen, um, business uh, consultants, uh, they know na merong ano, merong risk na isa na tinatawag natin pandemic. And uh, this pandemic, we're not so sure kung kailan mangyayari. At malaki yung loss na mawawala sa companies, sa lahat ng companies, even the global economy, kapag nangyari yung global pandemic. And then, yun na nga, nangyari na nga this year, yung global pandemic. So, nagkaroon ng effect, malaki yung effect sa business. Diba? Lahat ng industry affected. So, like for example, sa travel and tourism industry. Diba? Halos more than half of employees sa travel and tourism industry na wala ng work. Like for example, sa mga airlines, diba? Na... Naririnig niyo ba yung balita sa airline? Sa airline, naririnig niyo po ba yung balita about doon? Yes. Oh. Yes, sir. Nawawala ng trabaho diba? yung mga Nawala ng trabaho yung mga flight attendants, flight stewardess, uh, pilots. Nawalan sila ng work. Kasi syempre, wala naman lumilipad na aeroplano. 
uh, during the pandemic. And syempre, dahil na-retrench sila, nawala sila ng trabaho, hindi naman pwede silang magmukmuk sa bahay. Kailangan nilang kumilos pa rin para may pera pa rin sila. So, yung iba, di ba, yung merong flight attendant na nag nagtinda ng bulalo ba yun? Not sure, bulalo or alam ba? Basta meron siyang... Paris, sir. Um, ayun, Paris, mami. So, Paris, mami, nagtinda siya. And then, yung isa naman, flight stewardess. Uh, dati ang hawak niya is uh, bag, yung... Yung travel bag. Ngayon, ang hawak na niya is gasol. Yung gasol, yung tulak-tulak niya ng stroller yung gasol kasi meron family business sila yung nagbebenta ng gasol o oh, syempre siya yung nagde-deliver so uh, uh, those are the effects of uh, pandemic which is an inherent risk sa business kasi we're not so sure kung kailan mangyayari and grabe yung effect sa atin di ba hindi natin to kayang pigilan that's why That's why, uh, kaya siya inherent risk, di ba? Uh, while yung control risk, these are the control, uh, these are the risk na kaya nating i-control. So, kaya tayo may internal control. So, after analyzing the risk, we have to assess risk of fraud. So, di ba, may, may risk tayo nakita. Yung risk ba na to, Uh, pwede bang ma-incorporate ito sa fraud, mga fraudulent activities, di ba? So, ano-ano yung mga example ng fraudulent activities na, um, like for example, sa, sa petty cash, di ba? Sa petty cash, uh, sino may hawak ng petty cash? Uh, it's the petty cash custodian. Siyempre, tayo bilang internal auditor, iisipin natin, Uh, para saan ba yung petty cash? For small uh, expenses, relatively small expenses. Yung mga hindi malalaking expenses. Ano yung mga example ng small expenses? Uh, bayad sa jeep, bayad sa tricycle, kapag inutusan natin yung uh, messenger or janitor na um, merong bibilhin, may papabili tayo na office supplies kasi ubos na yung stock sa office supplies so papabili tayo sa kanila, di ba? So, alangan naman na ang ibibigay natin sa kanila pambayad sa jeep ay check here. Eh. Di ba? Ang napaka-inconvenient naman yon na iisuhan natin ng check eh, si driver, si Manong driver. Ibibigay ni messenger, ay Manong, ito po yung bayad ko ay binigay po ng company namin is check eh. 8 pesos tapos check it. So, napaka impractical nung ganun. So, that's why we have petty cash fund in our uh, in every businesses, meron silang established petty cash fund para readily available yung cash once kailangan nila for small expenses. And tayo bilang isang internal auditor, Uh, kailangan i-check natin kung valid ba talaga yung mga transactions na nandun sa petty cash, uh, petty cash fund, involved sa petty cash fund. So, uh, can you still hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Alright, so uh, let's say for example, uh, let's say for example, uh, based on my experience uh, sa isa kong client, yung... Uh, messenger nila kasi yung policy nung client ko na yon kapag uh, more than 3 hours or more than 4 hours nasa labas yung isang employee entitled siya for a meal sa isang pagkain pagkain syempre Bawa, from from 8 o'clock inabot siya ng 12 o'clock sa labas entitled siya sa pagkain so pwede siyang kumain tapos pwedeng i-reimburse sa petty cash fund kasi maliit lang naman yung ano yung value ng mga meals di ba pag kumain ka well, hindi naman siguro lalagpas ng isang libo yon o kakain ka sa Jollibee wala pang 200 pesos di ba so ipapareimburse sa petty cash fund ngayon nakita namin na meron siyang resibo na binigay na hindi naman talaga niya kinain yung pagkain na nandoon sa resibo so Paano namin nalaman? 
Uh, any idea? Paano natin malalaman na kung kinain ba niya talaga yon? Yung nandun sa resibo. So, mag-isip kayo bilang isang auditor, isang internal auditor. Siguro, sir, ano po? Uh, mali po yung date. Baka po hindi nagtugma yung date kung sabi niya kaya siya kumain tapos mali pala po yung nakalagay sa resibo. Pwede po yes, ba? tama po yun. Kung mali yung date, siyempre pinalabas mo siya today, di ba? Ngayon siya lumabas, pinapunta mo October 24. Pagbalik niya, yung binigay niyang resibo, October 22 pa. So, siyempre magtataka tayo, bakit po October 22 yung binigay niyong resibo? Eh, hindi naman nito yung, uh, hindi naman nito yung araw na kumain kayo dahil ngayon kayo kumain, di ba? So, doon pa lang makapansin niyo na. Ano pa kaya mga example? Aside from date, sabi natin, tama yung date, di ba? Isip pa kayong paraan, ano pa yung mga makikita, di ba? Ganun tayo, yung mga auditors kailangan skeptic, very doubtful mag-isip. Ano pa? So, aside from date, ano pa po yung nakikita nyo? So, tama yon yung date. Meron pa po ba? Or possible po sir na hindi ka na yung resibo? Parang napulot na niya or Possible, na possible. Na hindi po ka na yung resibo sir. Bawa, napulot na niya yung resibo. Yes, totoo yun. But... Uh, Tama yun, tama yun. May ibang gumagawa ng gano'n na pinupulot lang nila yung resibo. But syempre, of course, hindi natin malalaman kung paano natin, akong pinulot ba talaga nila. ba? Diba? Syempre, malalaman natin yun. Minsan, sa address, yung branch ng Jollibee o kaya ng Makdo, pinapunta mo siya sa Ortigas, pero yung binigay niya sa'yo sa Ermita, Manila. ba? Diba? Sabi mo, bakit po sa Ermita, Manila yung resibo nung ano? Nung nung Jollibee nyo, eh sa Ortigas lang kayo pinapunta. Ah, ba? Diba? And then another one, yung date na tulad na sinabi nyo. And then, in our case, dun sa client ko, yung na-trace namin, eh bata pa kasi yung messenger na yon. Pinapunta namin siya, ah, pinapunta siya nung client ko sa ano, SSS. Eh din lumagpas na ng tanghali, eh di kumain siya. Pag bigay niya ng resibo, may senior citizens discount. Tama yung date, Tama yung uh, place nandoon, pero ang nakita nila, may senior citizens discount. Siyempre, nagtanong yung sa petty cashier. Sabi ng petty cashier, Kuya, kinain mo ba talaga to? Sabi ng messenger, opo. Siyempre, tinanong na, bakit po tayo may senior citizens discount kung hindi naman kayo senior citizen? So, ganun yun. So, tama yung mga iniisip nyo bilang um, internal auditor. So, kailangan skeptic tayo sa mga bagay-bagay. Uh, Lahat ng processes, so we need uh, to be professionally skeptic, uh, apply due professional care. Yeah. ba diba? So, ganun tayo bilang isang auditor. So, kailangan, inisip natin, oh, parang may fraud dito. So, syempre, binigay na nga yun as incentive na kapag more than 3 hours ka, kailangan mo kumain, tapos ayaw mo pa kumain. Gusto mo, perahin pa yung, uh, yung ibibigay sa'yo na incentive na pagkain sana para hindi ka magutom. So, ganun lang yan. And then, fourth principle under risk assessment, you identify and ana analyze significant change. So, what are uh, the changes? Kung nakita nyo, na-assess nyo yung risk, in-apply nyo yung control procedures, meron bang pagbabago doon sa, uh, sa risk? So, kung meron, ibig sabihin, effective yung control. Kung hindi, uh, weak yung control na in-apply natin. So, yun yung meron sa risk assessment. Okay, and then... Part one, a third one is the control activities. So, control activities, uh, ito yung mga controls 
na sinet natin in place uh, sa control environment. Diba? So, ano na yung mga control activities na uh, pwedeng iset in place? Kasi ito na yung parang internal, con uh, ito na yung uh, internal control application, yung control activities in place. So, controls are actions established through policies and procedures that mitigate the likelihood and impact of risk. So, yung control risk pala, uh, by selecting and developing control activities, it mitigates the risk na babawasan, uh, humihina yung risk na nandoon sa particular process. Di ba? So, one example sa payroll. Doon tayo sa payroll. Oh, maraming nag-OT, di ba? OT ng OT. Pero, tama ba? Lahat ba ng OT? Lahat ba ng nag-OT? Oh, authorized ba? Lahat ng overtime. So, di ba may cost accounting na kayo, di ba? Can you still hear me, class? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Di ba? So, sa sa cost accounting di ba may in account na kayo how to account for overtime premium so um syempre yung mga empleyado gusto nila mag overtime dahil additional yun sa kanilang sahod pero syempre tayo bilang isang internal auditor kailangan alam natin okay sige nag overtime kayo but was it approved was it authorized is it an authorized overtime di ba Siyempre, iti-check natin. Kung hindi siya authorized or approved overtime, hindi sila pwede mag-claim ng overtime. Kahit mag-overtime kayo dyan, basta hindi yan approved, hindi pwede. Ano yung reason doon? Siyempre, kung walang approval ng overtime, lahat na lang mag-overtime. Hindi na sila gagawa sa umaga. Pag tapos na yung work nila, saka lang sila mag-work, tapos i-apply nila as overtime. So, ganun yung mga ano, ganun yung mga tao. Normal yun sa atin. Siyempre, kung may opportunity, may opportunity to get more money, uh, kukunin natin yung money. Diba? Kahit ano siya, kahit valid. Diba? Overtime. O, hindi tayo gagawa sa umaga, babagalan lang natin yung work natin. Pero pagdating sa gabi, dahil merong overtime, doon lang tayo magsimula mag-work. Siyempre, tayo bilang internal auditor, ang question natin, was the overtime an approved overtime kung approved siya another control na isi-set natin nag-file ba ng overtime form yung nagki-claim ng overtime syempre kapag nag-file ng overtime form tas approved din yung overtime yun lang yung way para makaklaim siya ng overtime so maiisasama yun sa computation ng payroll and then makiklaim niya na yung overtime pero kung hindi siya approve hindi pwede talaga. Approve man siya, pero hindi siya nakapag-file ng overtime. Hindi pa rin maisasama. Kailan siya maisasama? Sa susunod na sweldo. Kasi may process din sa payroll, di ba? Hindi naman pwede dahil nahuli ka magpasa ng overtime, uh, overtime form, babayaran ka na lang uh, separately. Isasama yan sa susunod na payroll cut-off. So, ganun yun. And then, select third, a second principle under control activity. Select and develop IT uh, general control under computers, di ba? General computer controls. So, syempre, dati hindi pa uso yung computers, di ba? Uh, dati lahat manual. Pero ngayon, uh, dahil techy na tayo lahat, uh, computer automated na, Siyempre, we have to set internal controls or controls na mayroong uh, uh, computer intervention. Siyempre, yung dati sa RTU, uh, ang log-in, log-out ng mga professors, bandy clock lang, di ba? Uh, may dala-dala silang card, yung time card, ipapasok lang sa bandy clock, and then ipapunch na siya ng bandy clock. Pag nag-time out din, pa-punch din ng bandy clock, nakasulat doon yung time out. Diba? So yung time in, saka time out through bandy clock. Pero ngayon, syempre, 
uh, lumilevel up na lahat ng mga businesses, including RTU. So, yung time in, time out na mga professors doon, naka-biometrics, yung finger, fingerprint na lang, di ba? So, yung fingerprint, ilalapat lang doon sa fingerprint scanner, and then ma-scan na, ma-identify na kung sino yung professor, and then nakapag-time in na, and then pag nag-time out, ganun din. So, syempre, tayo bilang internal auditor, ano ba yung mga control measures na pwede nating i-check doon sa mga computer-assisted or computer-generated uh, processes. Uh, meron ba kayong idea? Alam ko mga techie kayo, kaya alam ko na meron kayong idea about that. Okay, if you can uh, if you can share your ideas about that. Ano kaya natin? Ano kaya mga control measures kapag merong computer? processes, di ba? May processes na mayroong involvement yung computers. Ano kaya yung pwede natin gawin? Putting up a password. That's correct. Very correct. 100% correct. Putting up a password uh, is uh, the best way to uh, give control for uh, computer assisted uh, logins and logouts like in this case at uh, in today's case pandemic hindi makapunta lahat sa RTU di ba so pag hindi makapunta sa RTU yung mga professors walang time in time out pero pwedeng mag time in yung mga professors sa online portal na bandi clock yung mag i-click lang doon pero syempre um, kailangan ng password. So, lahat, lahat ng teachers, lahat ng professors, may kanya-kanyang password sila. And then, pag nai-login na nila yung username and then password, doon lang nila ma-access yung time in and time out. Kasi kapag walang password, pwedeng mag-time in yung isang professor para sa isang professor. Uh, ano pa kaya yung ibang measures na pwede natin? Uh, internal control measures na pwede nating um, gawin. Maglagay na ano, sir, security system sa computer. Maglagay ng security system. Yes. ba? Ano-ano kaya yung mga security system na pwede nating ilagay? So, like, for example, diba, uh, sa Facebook. Sa Facebook, may security system na rin sila, security control. Kasi si Facebook, naka-integrate na siya sa sa cellphone lang. Parang ang gusto ni Facebook, ang Facebook apps na access sa sa phone. Ngayon kapag i-access mo yan sa laptop or sa computer, magna-notify si Facebook sa phone mo na inaccess mo yung inaccess mo yung uh, Facebook mo sa computer or sa laptop. And then magbibigay siya ng security question. Diba? Magbibigay. Na, Ma-encounter niyo yan kapag nag-login kayo sa laptop or sa computer. Magbibigay siya minsan ng security question kung saan uh, ipapakita niya yung sets of friends niyo tapos sasabihin niya, sino dito si uh, Juan de la Cruz, ba? So, ikiklik mo yung picture ni Juan de la Cruz para ma-confirm na ikaw talaga yun. Kasi kung kilala mo si Juan de la Cruz. So, yun yung mga security measures. Another one, yung ginaganita ng CAPTCHA. Recaptcha ata yan or CAPTCHA. Yung before you enter your uh, login details or before ka makapasok doon sa account mo, merong recaptcha or CAPTCHA kung saan tinapa-identify sa'yo na ano, sinasabi, uh, please select pictures uh, that has traffic lights, di ba? Or please select pictures that has mountains. So, yun yung mga security uh, measures, security controls uh, before accessing someone's account. So, yun my example. Uh, kapag, um, in while auditing, uh, um, computer-assisted controls. And then third one under, third principle under control activities, uh, mobilizing through policies and procedures. So there, this uh, 
third pr uh, principle under control activities is integrating the internal control policies and procedures with the control activities. And then we have information and communication. So by using the relevant information. So kapag under information and communication, we have to use only relevant information. Bakit kaya relevant information lang yung ating gagamitin? Do you have any idea? Bakit relevant information lang yung gagamitin natin? Can you can you still hear me, class? Why why is it um, only relevant information is needed uh, in giving information or disseminating information? Um, while implementing internal control policies and procedures. Bakit kaya? Sir, pa, sorry lang. Para maging clear po and mabilis yung ano passes. Yes, that's true. That's correct. That's what uh, I am expecting na sabihin. Para clear, concise, precise yung information, yun lang. Wala ka ng ibang sasabihin Kasi yung gusto natin i-point, yung gusto talaga natin na mangyari. So, syempre, providing information uh, contains data. It contains data para ma-implement yung internal control policies and procedures. And kapag nagbigay ka ng information na unnecessary, baka maging, uh, magkaroon ng miscommunication, misunderstanding. ba So, dapat uh, relevant information lang. And then, syempre, we are creating flowcharts, di ba? Pag when giving information, tayo bilang auditor, gumagawa tayo ng flowcharts, um, concept maps, uh, for other people to understand ano ba yung takbo nung nasa uh, process. Ngayon, kung maglalagay ka ng iba-iba pang ano, information doon na hindi naman necessary, mas malilito lang yung titingin sa concept map or sa flowchart. And then, from information, we also have communication din. So, syempre, kailangan din natin ng formal internal communication and external communication while disseminating the information. Syempre, yung communication, depende yun kung ano yung um, organization na or yung tao na bibigyan natin information. So, not all uh, person uh, have the access to internet, di ba? So, syempre, kailangan natin i-communicate interpersonal or face-to-face. -face. So, we have interpersonal or face-to-face -face communication. And then, meron naman communication na uh, through email, di ba? Kasi wala sa office palagi, so pwede natin i-communicate through email or electronically. Then, there are also information that we need uh, to give to a group of uh person, group of employees. So, ang ibibigay natin communication naman is group level communication. Kasi dapat i-disseminate natin siya among teams, units, or interest groups. And then, meron namang communication or information na kailangan i-disseminate uh, sa entire organization. So, the way of, uh, yung communication natin should be organizational level communication. So, ganun lang yun. So from the information and communication, we have to communicate internally and then we have to communicate also, uh, also with the external parties uh, for other confirmations. So that's why we also need to communicate with the external parties. Then we also have monitoring activities. Siyempre, the components, uh, yun, the first four components na discuss natin, the control environment, 
kung ano yung workplace, syempre dapat natin makita yung workplace, working environment, from the workplace and working environment, ano-ano yung mga pwede nating uh, controls na iset, di ba? And then we have to assess the risk, which is the second component. Ano ba yung mga risk na nag exist doon? Uh, makikita natin siya initially from the control environment, from the organization itself, from those individuals, and then from the nature of the business. So do natin ma-assess yung risk. And then from assessing the risk, from checking the control environment, we can uh, give the control activities. Ano yung mga control activities na pwede natin i-implement? Diba? So do na tayo nag-umpisa na mag-set ng uh, internal control policies and procedures. And then, what are the information we need to give uh, to those concerned person or group of people? So, do naman pumasok yung information and proper communication. And then, last one, syempre, the monitoring. So, monitoring activities, we need to conduct ongoing or separate evaluation. Syempre, di ba, we have audit. Minsan, minsan may ongoing audit. Minomonitor natin, meron ba nagbago doon sa risk? Meron ba nagbago uh, kapag uh, in-implement yung additional control? So we have to evaluate uh, either, either for the ongoing audit or separate evaluation sa mga na-audit na before. And then we have to evaluate and communicate deficiencies. Kung meron nakitang deficiencies, we have to evaluate it further bakit merong deficiencies. And we have to communicate it with our board of directors or audit committee. Ano yung mga findings na nakita natin uh, doon sa weakness ng internal control. Kung meron bang weak points yung internal control. So those are the components of uh, internal control framework. So we have five components. And then we have three objectives. Last one is for the levels uh, affected by the internal control framework. So meron tayong levels uh, kung saan uh, dapat isama natin, i-consider natin, or i-apply natin yung internal control. Siyempre, in applicable ang internal control policies and procedures uh, sa function, function-wide, doon sa pinaka-basic unit sa bawat tao. So function-wide controls, Ano, ano yung mga function-wide controls na pwede natin i-apply, ba? So, by looking at the components, control environment, risk assessment, control activities, information and communication, monitoring activities, ano yung mga applicable para dun sa mga tao, per individual, ba? And then, ano yung reporting objective, operating objective, and then compliance objective na pwede natin ma-achieve by uh, giving function-wide controls, then, siyempre, group of individuals uh, create a, uh, will form an operation. So, operating unit or operating department, operating team. So, meron tayong operation-wide controls. And then, um, group of operations, we have division-wide, uh, division controls, division-wide controls. So, diba, uh, let's go with uh, yung mga sikat na factories or multinational companies. Uh, can you still hear me, class? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. So, thank you. So, uh, minamadali ko na lang para mabilis na tayo matapos. So, sa so, yung mga malalaking company, like for example, si Procter & Gamble. Si Procter & Gamble, di ba, meron siyang beauty care division. Sa beauty care division, uh, meron silang uh, head and shoulders, di ba? Head and shoulders factory site. Meron silang safeguard, factory site. Uh, ano, ano pa ba yung mga product ng uh, Procter & Gamble? So, sa beauty care. You can, you can answer through our chat box or you can uh, open your microphones. So, uh, yun yung mga alam ko normally. Head and shoulders, safeguard, uh, ivory locks. So, yan yung mga, ano, mga example ng products nila about beauty care. So, lahat ng mga products na yun, di ba, may kanya-kanyang factories yun or kanya-kanyang operating units para mag-produce ng mga products na yun. Pero under sila ng iisang division. So, which is the beauty care division. And then, sa division na yun, meron silang division-wide control. Ini-implement yung internal auditor. Di ba, may 
may internal control na ini-implement bawat uh, process sa bawat uh, products, uh, yung mga nagpo-produce doon sa operations, and then meron ding internal control na ini-implement for the whole division. So, ganun po yun. So, may iba pang divisions like uh, food division. Siyempre, may food rin yung Procter and Gamble. Sa kanila yung uh, Pringles. Di ba, kumakayan kayo ng Pringles, di ba? Sa Procter and Gamble din yun. Ano pa ba? Uh, VIX. Kay, VIX uh, kay Procter and Gamble din yung VIX. So, uh, may mga, ano pa ba yung mga alam nyo na ano? Tide. So, yung Tide naman, siguro sa household cleaning division naman yun. Tide, Downey, Ariel, Procter and Gamble yun. Yung surf sa Unilever yun eh. So, kalaban nila yun. So, so mga ganon. So, uh, in each division, there are division-wide controls. And this group of divisions will form the whole entity. The entity. So, meron naman tayong tinatawag na entity-wide controls. So, yung internal control. I'm so sorry. Downy, yes. Downy, di ba? Yung, di ba may bago na sila yung, oh my god. Uh, hello? Hi. Can you still hear me? Yes, sir. Can you still hear me, class? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hi, class. Can you still hear me? Yes, sir. Right. So, okay. So, Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Hello.
Hello, sir. Sir, can you hear us? <laughs> Pakinggan lang po ng baso. May sound rin. Hi, class. Can you still hear me? Yes, sir. Can you hear Yes, sir. I am just using my phone now. So, um, okay. So, yun nga. Sa levels, we have function-wide controls, operation-wide controls, and then division-wide controls, and then entity-wide controls. So, that means to say, lahat nung nasa... Uh, uh, levels of organization, applicable pala yung internal control. So, hindi lang doon sa smallest uh, unit, yung mga tao, pati rin pala hanggang uh, buong entity, applicable yung uh, applicable yung internal control. And then, uh, we also need to consider uh, the relationships between uh, the organization and then the employees. Why do we need to consider the um, relationship between the organization and then the employees? Bakit kaya? Bilang internal auditor, bakit kaya natin kailangan i-check? Bakit uh, kailangan ng natin i-consider yung internal control, ay ah, yung relationship ng... Yeah. Yeah. Hello, can you still hear me? Yes, sir. All right. So, okay, let me just share again my screen. Okay. okay. All right. So, bakit kaya kailangan natin i-consider yung relationship uh, nung... Kailangan natin i-consider yung relationship ng uh, employees and then the organization. Why do we need to consider? Kasi po, they work hand in hand. Need po ng coordina coordination sa bawat isa, yes. At the same time, syempre, kailangan malaman natin kung ano ba yung nararamdaman ng mga employees sa organization. Kasi mamaya, um, hindi na pala okay yung ano, hindi na pala okay yung tingin ng employees sa organization. And then in the future, mag-strike na lang sila, di ba? So, in that way, kung alam natin, mapiprevent natin yung future loss. Eh, kung mag-strike lahat ng empleyado, wala walang, ano, walang operation, walang production on that day, di ba? So, from Colleen, in that way po, malalaman natin kapag may labor issues. Yes, that's correct. From like a May, pagmahal ng organization, ng employees niya, mamahalin ng employees ang business and organization, which is true. So, there is a uh, mutual, uh, I mean, mutualism, eh, from mutual relationship between the employees and then the organization. Kasi po, pwedeng pagugatan niya ng labor strike, which is, yes, correct, di ba? Maraming nagla-labor strike dati, di ba? So, yun. And then, uh, authority defining superiors and subordinates. So, by checking the levels, uh, malalaman natin kung ano yung authorities ng no, mga superiors and subordinates, ano yung mga uh, controls na pwede natin iset. And then, general views of employees about the organization's destiny, purpose, and goals, and their place in it. 
So this is the last one. Other control framework. So yung pinag-aralan natin is about causal frameworks. Can framework? Can you still hear me, class? All right. So yeah. magdadagdag yes, na lang ka. Yung yes, sa causal framework, ito yung pinag-aralan natin. Yung ito yung uh, diniskas natin about internal control. Then there are other control frameworks like COCO frameworks. And tawag sa COCO na yun, criteria of control framework. So, ginawa ito ng Canadian Institute of Chartered Accountant. Actually, yung COCO framework is similar with the COSO framework. Only that, COCO framework focuses on the behavioral approach. Kung ano yung behavior doon ng, sa internal control. So, acceptance rate, you check yung acceptance rate ng mga tao sa internal control, ay okay pala itong internal control. So, gusto nila, di ba? Ay, ayaw namin yung internal control na ito, masyado mahigpit. So, yun yung sa COCO framework. Well, yung COSO framework naman, COSO framework, uh, it focuses more on the methodology. Methodology nung uh, internal control policies and procedures. Then, we have COVID framework. Pag sinabing COVID framework, Control Objectives for Information and Related Technology. So, dito naman, ito yung internal control na in-implement kapag may computer intervention. Diba? Halimbawa, sa mga IT industries, COVID framework yung ginagamit. Pero naka-align din siya with the COSO framework, only that merong information technology uh, intervention. And then we, the latest one is the ISO framework. So ISO means International Standardization Organization. So one example, si RTU, balik na kay RTU. Si RTU, uh, ISO certified siya, ISO 9000 certified, meaning to say compliant siya with the internal controls set by the ISO. Kasi pa, mahigpit si ISO. So... Kapag compliant ka doon, ibig sabihin, okay yung internal controls uh, sa isang organization. Kaya ganun yan. Yung sa RTU, ISO 9000 certification yun sa kanila. Pag sinabing ISO 9000, uh, sila ay uh, more on internal controls regarding documentation. So more on documentation sila, nakafocus. And then there are other ISO certifications na related naman sa ibang industry. Like for example, sa, sa mga mining companies, uh, they have ISO 14,000 certification uh, regarding environmental, ano naman yan, environmental controls, environmental internal controls naman nila yun. Parang kailangan compliant tayo with the existing rule, uh, rules and regulations ng mga environmental uh, authorities natin, uh, yung meron ba tayong na, na ilalabas na hazardous materials, dapat hindi natin na ilalabas yun, ano yung proper disposal. So, yun na may mga control frameworks ni ISO sa ibang industry. So, kay RTU is more on documentation kasi uh, state university, maraming papers, so ganun. So, these are the latest uh, control frameworks na nag exist ngayon. Pero tayo bilang internal auditors, focus muna tayo sa COSO framework. Are there any questions? Are there any other questions that uh, you would like to ask? Uh, meron pa po ba kayong question? Class, uh, can you still hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, we're done with the chapter 5. Uh, so, yung coverage ng exam natin, prelim exam, will be from chapter 1 to chapter 5. That's only an essay and situ situational cases uh, type of exam. So, gusto ka lang malaman kung ano yung understanding nyo sa, sa operations audit. So, hindi ko naman kailangan malaman yung Kung tinatandaan nyo lahat, gusto ko lang kung paano nyo i-apply yung natutunan ninyo sa operations audit. And uh, bibigay ko yung exam sa Thursday by posting to our group. And uh, your deadline will be until Sunday next week. So, uh, yun lang. And then... 
uh, Sunday next week. And then Thursday, uh, sorry, not Thursday, uh, Saturday next week, we have uh, another meeting. So we'll discuss um, uh, the other chapters para matapos natin yung libro. So at least kahit pa paano, uh, productive naman itong ating new normal. So, ayun lang. And then, uh, there will be quizzes uh, to be posted sa group natin, yung, per, yung private group natin. Uh, Di ba, we have quiz na sa chapter 1. So, uh, there will be quizzes from chapters 2 to 5. And then, uh, pasagot na lang ako. Sagutan nyo lang. You can retake. So, para ma ma-check nyo kung natatandaan nyo ulit. And then, Siguro, in the future, kung nasa December na, you can visit again those quizzes. You can retake again. Okay lang naman. You can retake para kahit pa paano uh, ma-retain sa inyo yung mga questions na nandoon. And then, magagamit nyo yan kasi pag nag-auditing theory kayo, lumalabas yung mga questions na yan doon din sa kanila, sa subject na yun. So, are there any other questions, class? Are there, any, are there any other questions? None po. None. So, thank you so much for joining this call and uh, see you next meeting. See you next meeting and uh, I highly appreciate your uh, efforts in joining this meeting. Happy weekend, class. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Yes, Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.